Hello everyone, it's Shivangi Tiwari from Hidayatullah National Law University. Today, in this video, I'm going to talk about the review procedures under CRPC. So the processes which are involved in the criminal justice system have a drastic impact on the lives of people who are involved in it. It is a well-known saying that to err is human and judiciary being one of the institutions created by humans is prone to committing errors. The need for some rectifying mecha mechanism to come into play becomes imperative, keeping in view this need in order to prevent the fallibility of the judicial system, the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973 has devised various provisions uh, like um, Section 372 to Section 394 of the Court deals with the provisions relating to appeals. However, in exceptional cases, no right to appeal lies with the person. And in order to prevent the situations in which the aggrieved party does not have any remedy, the legislators have incorporated the concept of review under the Code of Criminal Procedure, which is called revision. Um, section 397 to Section uh, 405 of the Code includes the provisions which uh, deals with the revisional jurisdiction with the courts. Chapter 30 of the Code uh, deals with two important jurisdictions which are reference and revisional jurisdiction. So now I'm going to discuss about the reference jurisdiction. Um, under section 395 uh, of the code, the reference jurisdiction is given uh, which can be invoked by any court of metropolitan magistrate. The term reference means to put forward something in front of any person in order to obtain his opinion on the thing so forwarded to him. Section 395 of the Code um, confers the right to the subordinate criminal courts to refer the cases to the High Courts. Um, the section provides that the subordinate courts may approach the High Court of a respective uh, state where they are located and may refer a case to the High Court so approach in order to obtain uh, its opinion in the case. The right of these subordinate courts can be exercised in two situations which are uh, firstly when the validity of any act, ordinance or any regulation is in question and the court thinks that the validity of such act, ordinance or regulation is doubtful. Secondly, when in any case uh, there is a question of law involved and which the court thinks um, it, it requires the interpretation of the High Court. So basically there are four uh, prerequisites for references to be made under section 395 of the code. Firstly, the case should be pending before the court. Secondly, the case should necessarily involve a question of law. Thirdly, the law which is in question must be in form of an act ordinance or regulation and lastly the courts must believe that the law in question is invalid so now i'm going to talk about the revisional jurisdiction provided under the court uh, so the revision uh, the literal meaning of revision is the act of revising or reviewing something in order to locate and rectify the mistakes if any present in it Section 399 to Section 401 of the Code deals uh, confers a revisionary jurisdiction to the Sessions Court and High Court respectively. The revisionary jurisdiction is the power of the higher courts to call for record uh, from the lower uh, courts of cases which are already decided by those lower courts. So the objective of revisionary jurisdiction um, are, are as firstly, uh, higher courts can keep a check on whether the legal principles, procedures and jurisdictions are duly complied with or not by the subordinate courts and secondly, uh, it keeps the lower courts within the bounds of their authority and makes them work uh, in accordance with the rule of law. So there are two essentials which are required to exercise the revisional jurisdiction. Um, the two are, 
Firstly, the court should call for records of the cases which are already decided by the court, which is subordinate to it. And secondly, there should be unsatisfaction of parties who were involved in a particular suit. So, the power of revision is also conferred to the sessions judges um, by the criminal Code of Criminal Procedure. Section 399 of the Code confers this uh, revisionary jurisdiction upon the sessions judge. So, this section makes uh, the revisional jurisdiction of high courts coextensive with that of the um, sessions court. Similarly, section 400 of the code provides that an additional sessions judge has the uh, revisional powers which are similar to those possessed by the sessions judge which are mentioned under the code. In the cases which are transferred to him by the sessions judge under any general or special order of the sessions court. The provisions regarding the power of review with the higher courts and the procedures to regulate the powers are contained under section 397 to section 405 of the Code of Criminal Procedure. The power of revision with higher judiciary is very wide and is purely discretionary in nature. Therefore, no party to any suit can ever claim it as a matter of right to be heard before the court with revisional jurisdiction. The revisional jurisdiction which is conferred by the code is very wide but the same cannot be exercised in exceptional cases. So these exceptional cases are firstly in cases where an appeal can lie but there is no appeal brought by the party. Secondly, when they are, when interlocutory orders are passed in any appeal, inquiry or trial. Thirdly, the court which is exercising its revisional jurisdiction does not possess the power to convert a decision of acquittal into a decision of conviction. Fourthly, a person is entitled to file only one application for revision in either court of session or high court and once a person has filed the application for revision he cannot file any other application in any court of law in the territory of india so now uh, section 397 to section 401 of the code uh, confers revisional uh, jurisdiction upon the high courts so this was all for today's video i hope you find this video beneficial thank you